Cyberpunk released last week, as you all already know, but what you may not know is that you can build an actual budget gaming PC to play it. Let's have a look. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you all of the parts inside this really budget gaming PC that's super easy to build right now. I'll show off some alternative parts if you're thinking about copying this build and need some more options. And then finally after that, we're gonna benchmark a bunch of games, including the new Cyberpunk 2077. Before all that though, a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by ASRock and their new X570 and B550 Tai Chi Razor Edition motherboards. These new and beautiful motherboards are rocking Razer Chroma RGB technology as you would expect. They have an optimized VRM design which is perfect for those new AMD Ryzen 5000 series CPUs and they're even rocking Killer E 3100 2.5 gigabit LAN ports with an AX 1650 Wi-Fi 6 solution. Learn more about these motherboards or even go buy one for yourself with that first link down in the description. Thanks again to ASRock for sponsoring today's video. So just as a quick disclaimer, I've actually been giving this disclaimer a lot lately. All of the parts inside this budget gaming PC were chosen by my Twitch chat because they're a bunch of ballers over there and they've been really helping me out with these build guides lately. With that being said, let's kick things off with the case because honestly, I think that's the best deal that we found during that Twitch live stream, twitch.tv slash SaxTechTurf, by the way, where I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. And this here is the Rosewell Spectra D100 and I ended up only paying $47 for it new off Newegg. The Spectra D100 comes equipped with four pre-installed RGB fans, a nice tempered glass side panel, and a basement to hide all of those ugly cables. I'll have links to this case and everything I talk about down in the description, and this $47 sale was honestly a pretty unreal steal, so I can't guarantee that you're gonna find it at this price. This was packing a ton of value. If you're looking to spend around $50 on a similar case, I'd also recommend something like the Montec X1, which is also rocking for RGB fans and packing a ton of value. Next up, we have the CPU, and this is the Ryzen 5 1500X, which I paid $77 for and I got this off AliExpress. As you guys know, AliExpress is a really good spot to find solid CPU deals, but if you live here in the United States like I do, you will need to accept those insanely long three to four week shipping times. You can also find the 1500X used on eBay, of course, but during that Twitch live stream, I was seeing them go for like 10 to $20 more, and when you're paying that kind of money for a CPU, you're now flirting with something like an Intel i3-9100F or even something better from Intel. I wouldn't recommend paying any more than around that $70 $7 that I did for the 1500X, but this is still a very capable CPU here in 2020, rocking four cores and eight threads with a boost clock of 3.7 gigahertz right out of the box. Cooling the 1500X is simply a Wraith Stealth Cooler, which is the default option for a ton of Ryzen CPUs. If yours doesn't come with one, you can find these on eBay for like nine or $10. Moving on, we get to the motherboard, and this was another great deal that I gotta thank the Twitch chat for. This is the ASRock B450 HDV R4.0 that we picked up on eBay used for just $40. $40 is an amazing price for any AM4 motherboard to be honest, although I will admit this is an extremely bare bones motherboard and even though it's B450, it might as well be A320 because I wouldn't really recommend overclocking on it. The other downfall is that it only has two RAM slots and that's definitely the most shady part of this build in my opinion. The RAM kit is one that I already had and this is a 2 by 4 gigabyte DDR4 kit that's clocked at 3000 megahertz from Team Group and putting 8 gigabytes of RAM in a motherboard with only two slots isn't the best option for future proofing. Although I didn't do it for this build, I would highly recommend either buying a motherboard that has four RAM slots so you can add two more sticks to get up to 16 gigabytes in the future, or just pay the extra money now and get a two by eight gigabyte kit so you're at 16. We're about to see in the benchmarking section that with a super budget system like this, eight gigabytes of RAM actually isn't the bottleneck in a ton of games, but definitely keep an eye in that upper left hand corner to see the exact CPU, GPU, and RAM utilizations. Moving down this parts list, we get to the GPU, and now this selection I'm not happy with either. What you're looking at here is a PNY GTX 1050 Ti, but I originally had a $75 GTX 970 that would have performed way better. That GTX 970 actually died on me as I was testing as it was a pretty old and abused GPU, and the 1050 Ti is all I had left in my studio at the time of making this video. This is a four gigabyte model, so with the settings that we'll be running with, we really shouldn't be bottlenecked by the VRAM. This model doesn't require any external power from the PSU, and overall, it performed pretty well, especially for a last minute decision. If you're looking to spend around that 
$75 to $100 range. It's still a really rough time for GPUs on the used market right now, but I would recommend doing your best to find something like an 8 gigabyte RX 570 or even an RX 580 if you can find the right deal locally. Next up is the storage. And once again, this is the Intel 660p 500 gigabyte NVMe M.2 drive. And the reason why you're seeing these so often is because on Amazon Prime Day, these were down to $33. So I bought five of them. I haven't seen a deal like this since then. So you probably won't be able to find an NVMe drive for less than $35 right now at 500 gigabytes. But I would indeed recommend spending the extra money up to around $50 to get one. The Crucial P2 500 gigabyte model is usually at $50. If you spend another $10, you can get the Crucial P1, which has DRAM, which is the one I always recommend. And there's also the Silicon Power model, which doesn't have DRAM, but it's usually a bit cheaper. And finally, the last part in this parts list is the power supply. And this is yet another one from EVGA B stock. If you guys don't know this, the EVGA B stock website has been flooded lately with used GPUs at ridiculously low prices. And I picked this 450 W3 model up for only $30. With that being said, here's what the final parts list is looking like. And if you were to copy this build today, I would aim for somewhere around that 300 to $350 mark. And we'll see here soon that it's certainly enough money to run Cyberpunk or really any game that you throw at it. I'm going to start mentioning this in all my build guides because you guys have seriously been asking for this so much. If you want to see the step-by-step -step building tutorial on how I built this PC, check out that Twitch link down in the description because that'll take you to the Thursday Thursday live stream where I literally built this PC step-by-step. -step. All right, so with all the part stuff out of the way, it's now time to move into these benchmarks and we'll save Cyberpunk for last. That way we can talk about it a bit more. And this year, of course, is the new Call of Duty Cold War and in 1080p low settings, I got right on the money at 60 FPS. All right, who wants to dive? All right, Call of Duty time. I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling it. There's one, there's two, good start. Also playing pretty smooth above 60 FPS. Let's go. Hello, sir, headshot. Oh, that actually wasn't, oh, who else? Look at this guy. He just has no chance. Just, just sit down, seriously. This guy wants some too? Headshot. I'm just gonna keep going back to the same location, man. Nobody can kill me over here. This is my turf. But yeah, as you can see, the GPU is right at 100%. And where's that? CPU is around 46. Oh my god, grenade, grenade. GPU is at like 50% or so, getting a little bit above 60 FPS. Not too bad, not too bad. That guy was bad. Uh. Next up was Fortnite and in 1080p Pro settings with an unlocked FPS. I got a very solid 135 FPS. And just like always, make sure you lock that frame rate to whatever your monitor's refresh rate is at to boost up that 1% low a bit higher. Following that was Counter-Strike Global Offensive, absolutely dominated in this one while benchmarking just like always. And in 1080p Pro settings, this budget PC got an average FPS of 243. All right, time for some all gameplay and oh, we're off to a great start. Let's go, Counter-Strike, baby. So we do only have two minutes left. Let's see if I can get enough kills in less than two minutes. And yes, I do know that the camera quality isn't as good as normal. I'm trying to say something here, guy. And yeah, I know that the camera quality isn't as good as it normally is during this segment, but I don't have the studio completely set up. Si Are you serious? Anyway, yeah, the camera quality isn't as good, but that guy's not good either. Oh God, I only have 30 seconds left. At least I'll kill a chicken. Rainbow Six Siege followed up after that, and using the built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p and high settings, this PC got 121 frames per second. Next up was Rogue Company. Really need to find the time to jump into this more, as I've kind of not had the time for it lately, and in 1080p with low settings, including that baked in 150 FPS cap, I got an average of 146 FPS. Another dominating title for me is Valorant, and in 1080p medium settings, I got 165 FPS. Valorant time, baby. This is what domination looks like actual headshot there. I'm dominating these people just in the warm-up phase. Like, they might as well just quit right now before it even gets started. <clears throat> that person was pretty good. All right, so I have a feeling that the warm-up time is now over. Sit down. From behind. From the front. <clears throat> that was going to be funny, dude. All these people trying to ruin my funny clips. Like, that guy, just, just let me kill you, please. I'm trying to make a video here. Thank you. Thank you for being a team player. Thank you as well, man. You guys are all, all being nice all of a sudden. 
So nice. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Moving down this benchmarking run, we get to the brand new and obnoxiously demanding Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And using the built-in benchmarking tool in 1080p and low settings, I got 46 FPS. As you can see, this was pushing our GTX 1050 Ti to the absolute max, but you can also see that the 1% low was actually pretty decent. So this was definitely a playable 46 FPS. And speaking of a stable 1% low, the Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark was finally up. And man, this is a really demanding game to run. This PC was actually only capable of a 34 FPS average in 1080p in low settings. And if you want to get closer to that 60 FPS target mark, you're going to either have to drop to 900p or spend extra money on things like RAM and the GPU. Like I was saying about that 1% low though, this was still pretty stable. And I actually played through a couple of hours of Cyberpunk on this PC and it was a perfectly fine playing experience. The cutscenes were honestly more choppy than the actual gameplay, which is fine with me. And if this was the only way that I could experience this new game, I'd be happy with it and just thankful that this super budget system could run this brand new and very demanding title. And then finally, for one more benchmark, we have 3D Mark's Time Spy, and this budget gaming PC cranked out a score of 2,457. Now, because this build guide didn't go so well because the GPU died on me during testing, this obviously isn't the most valued $300 gaming PC that I've ever built before. I would highly recommend checking out the video in the upper right-hand corner or the multiple videos I'll have linked down in the description if you're looking for other ways to build a $300-ish dollar gaming PC. All in all, though, for having a GPU die on me in the middle of testing, I think this turned out to be a pretty decent build. Like I just said, though, feel free to click my other similarly priced build guides, which are linked down in the description if you want some more ideas. Be sure to let me know what you thought of this build here. And finally, I hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, and also our gaming PC giveaway for hitting 100,000 subscribers is still live, and that's linked down in the description as well.